Hello and welcome to this edition of Ad HR Vision. This time I'm going to take some calls and answer your HR questions. The first up on the phone line is Sophie from Brentwood. Hello Teresa and thanks for taking my call. I'd like to ask you how and when I can use a settlement agreement. Okay, um, hi Sophie. Settlement agreements are used as common practice now when the employment relationship isn't working. It enables the employer to initiate a business discussion with the employee as an alternative to actually going down a process. A word of caution is that you now must be clear in your own mind about what the alternative process might be should an agreement not be reached. I hope that helps, Sophie. Yes, thanks, Teresa. Our next caller, I think, is uh, Philip from Crawley. Hello, Philip. What's your question? Hi, perhaps you can help me. I'm totally confused about flexible working requests and whether I have to agree to them or not. Ah, yes. OK. Well, Philip, first of all, flexible working is now open to all employees with service. The short answer is no, you don't have to agree, as long as you have a robust commercial and, of course, non-discriminatory reasons for rejecting and that you're, of course, not favouring one employee over another. The onus is also on the employee to put forward the request and a solution as to how the shortfall in any resourcing may work. So in essence, there is a process that does need to be followed by an employee when making the request. Hope that helps. Thanks, Teresa. Our next question is from Stephen. Hello, Stephen. What's your question? Hi, Teresa. Stephen from Leicester here. My question is that I've just increased my employee's pay, which I was expecting to have to do in October, mm. but now I understand there's something called living wage coming in. What's that? Oh yes, confusing, isn't it? <laughs> Thanks for your question. The living wage is coming into force in April 2016. The best way to think of this is another age parameter onto the national minimum wage. So April next year, if you employ anyone aged 25 and above, the next tier is going to be the national living wage and this will apply. Okay, that's made things a bit clearer. Thank you. Now we're going over to Swansea and Charlotte. Hello, Charlotte. Hi, Teresa. We have a lot of recruitment in our company and I find it a real headache. How can we improve our chances of getting the right person? Ah, oh, yes. Okay, Charlotte. This is a difficult one and I have to say it's a bit crystal ballish. Um, there are things an employer can do to improve their rate of success. Recruitment training, which should definitely be part of the manager's toolkit. Um, I'd also say clear job descriptions, um, a clear idea also of what good and poor performance in the role looks like. Um, recruit for eligibility, but also for suitability into the company. Take up references, perhaps do a basic psychometric test, and of course, a good induction really does help. That sounds great. Thanks, Teresa. Bye. Now we have Anthony on the line. What's your question, Anthony? I've just taken on an apprentice and things are not working out and they're not performing as well as I had hoped. So my question is, can I dismiss him based on his poor performance? Sorry to hear this isn't working out. This is a difficult area because, in essence, they are on a training agreement with you and the fact that they are an apprentice itself indicates limited experience. It is quite complex and I'm afraid it actually boils down to the detail of the contract. If you go to the AdHR website, I've actually covered this topic in more detail on a fact sheet. That might be helpful to you. Thank you for your question, Anthony. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for today. If you've got any other questions, please do get in touch. The number's on the screen now, and I'll try and cover those in the next programme. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.